Hello everyone, this is Shadow Mario 41 and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is what we got in the last video, it's the claw shot. And it can latch onto these little target thingamajigs, many of which are switches on the ceiling anyway. And they open the gates like that. So that's pretty cool. This is probably one of the most useful items in the game. I'm gonna say that right now. We use it for pretty much everything, but I'll see you back at the main room in just a sec. Alright, here we are back at the main room. I didn't want to bore you with all the backtracking. It's just straightforward linear backtracking. Back to here. So now that we have the claw shot, we can do a lot more in this center room of the lake bed temple. Namely, we can latch onto vines and cross over walls like that. So that, you know, that limit as to where we could go is pretty much gone now. Uh, let's see. We gotta look for a switch that can only be activated. Not that one. That can only be activated with the claw shot. So let's take a look. Oh, tech tight. Get out of my way. I don't have time for your hopping. No, you know what? He's just gonna get Kill him. Die, die, yes. I don't know when these tech tights will learn. Don't they hear from, like, their fellow tech tights? Like, hey, this guy's really tough. Just leave him alone, though, and he won't really attack you. No, they just all insist on hopping at me. I don't want to kill them. They're cute little guys. Why? I don't want to kill them. They just have some vendetta for me, I guess. Anyway, with the staircase turned that way, that rushes the water down this path and go down here. See? Tektites. Gotta hop at them. They always have to hop at Jeez. So, with the water down here, it turns this big water wheel, ferris wheel, whatever you want to call it, type of thing. And it allows us to get into this room. And in this room, let's see what we have. Oh, uh, we have more of these little platforms. I hate these platforms. Uh, which, but we can now... Actually, I think I can make this jump. Let's see. That's a big jump. All right. Wow, I actually made that. Uh, we can now use the claw shot to get around. Because, see, these things aren't really moving. But we can use the claw shot to latch to kill bats. We could use the claw shot to kill bats, but... Anyway, we're going to use the claw shot on that little thing there. And you can also move up and down on the claw shot, which is really nice. Uh, it does obviously have a range. It's not infinite. <laughs> Look at that bat. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you right after the cutscene. I'm going to get you. Don't worry. I'm going to get you. You're in my sights now. I can't lose. Oh, I missed. <laughs> That was a bad train of thought, by the way, in case you're wondering. So yeah, obviously the claw shot is an infinite. It does have a range. Um, I forget... No, you don't actually get a range upgrade for the claw, claw shot. It's not like uh, how you get the hook shot and the long shot in the previous Zelda games. But look at this! We can go up here! This part of the game reminds me of Prince of Persia The Sands of Time. I'm not sure if you've ever played the game. Not the movie. The movie was meh. But the game had these big open rooms where you had to really look for the next place to go. Oh, there it is. You had to really look for the next place to go. Like in these huge, gigantic rooms. That's exactly what this is like. You gotta look for the little platform that you can latch onto. Or the vines in this case. And take it. Alright, so it looks like I can get over there. Also, you can't latch onto the ones with the torches. See? It doesn't show up as a viable target. But we can go this way. This way is good. We can swing around this way, around, around. Thank you. All right, in the door. Let's see what's over here. See, this is one reason why I don't really like the lake bed temple. Oh, there's this guy. Uh, hold on, before I get to that, you could kill this guy with the claw shot. You can use the claw shot to take him out of his little bubble. But I much prefer just beating him up by exploding his bubble. Like, that's just better. Hate to burst your bubble. I think I used that joke. Did I use that joke? I should think of a new bubble joke. I can't really think of one at the moment. But anyway, what I was going to say before was... Uh, this One reason I hate the Lake Bed Temple is it always seems so repetitive. You have these circular rooms, you know, that surround that one big center. Super tech. That's not... Jeez. They surround that one center room, and it just gets really repetitive really quickly. I'll use this switch to open the gate so we don't have to climb up and around again. But yeah, it's just, this is probably my least favorite dungeon in this game. Just because it's so repetitive. In that, you know, you have a little circular room, then you go in here, and there's more water, and it's just the same thing over and over. I mean, obviously there's like more enemies and stuff, but it's really not all that different. It just seems like you're repeating the same things over and over. I mean, the puzzle in the middle is brilliantly designed. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I really love the way... Uh, puzzles in the Zelda game work, as in like, you, the whole dungeon works in tangent, tandem, in, ta in tangent, yeah, the whole dungeon works in tangent to another dungeon, 
that doesn't make any sense in tandem you know all the rooms work together and it's just one giant puzzle that's pretty cool you know that takes like some thought you can't just like make a dungeon you gotta sit down and be like all right this room's gonna do this this room's gonna do this you know it's a big deal it's a big effing deal anyway so yeah we do have to walk up this uh little circular path again watch out for those stupid charging things uh, oh boy oh boy he's charging he's charging Ooh, that was a close one. I thought I wouldn't be able to get my shield outside. And slash my shield. Wow. <laughs> that would have been disastrous. And this is not the right weapon. No stalactite up. Or, yeah, stalactite up on the ceiling. So it looks like we got to just use the claw shot and time it so that water geyser isn't in our path when we decide to go across like that. Perfect. Right, watch out for the charging thing. Okay. I really don't know what those things are called. I mean, of course they have names. Every enemy in the Zelda series has a name. I might just call them Charging Chucks for all I care. I mean, it really don't, it doesn't matter. Oh, another thing with those little pathetic things. You can actually use the claw shot to steal their armor, which is pretty funny. And then without their armor, they are really useless. <laughs> and you can just slash them to death. More water bombs, because that's what I need. You know, the water bomb guy looks like a chain chomp. I never really pointed that out, but it does. Alright, so let's go up here. Yes. We can now latch onto that. I actually have to backtrack to another room similar to this. Actually, I think this is the compass, so we'll give the compass its moment of glory. There it is, the compass. So yeah, I actually have to backtrack to a similar room that we went to before, just like this. I think it was the first one that we went to with water. And get the chest there, because now that you have the claw shot, you can actually get it. Which is kind of annoying that you have to backtrack all that way, but you have to. There's really no way to avoid it. Um, so I'll have to do that. I'll probably do that at the end. Once, like, the whole puzzle is solved and everything, so I don't interrupt, you know, the puzzle-solving process. But whatever. Because the worst thing... <laughs> I, I talked about how I love how the puzzles, you know, the rooms all work together, but the worst thing is messing it up. Because then you have to reset everything. Oh, this piranha is you can actually catch the piranhas in the water with a fishing rod. Epic fail jump. Uh, but it, you actually just throw them back. So it doesn't actually get added to your fish journal or anything like that. And speaking of all that crap, there's all fish journals and side quests and crap. I'm not planning on filling up the fish journal or I don't even know if that's what it's called. Fish log, fish book, fish and chips, whatever it is. I don't plan on doing that. I mean, I'll catch as many as I can, but I'm not going to go out of my way and be like, oh, here's where you find the whatever fish. And yeah, it doesn't matter. All I care about, I am going to do the fishing minigame, because fishing in this game is awesome. Like, I don't know if you can fish in Skyward Sword, which is coming out soon, but actually by the time this video goes up, it might already be out. <laughs> but um, I don't know if you can fish in that game, but the fishing in this game, it, it could even in and of itself be its own game. Like, that's how cool it is. I really like it. Pass through that Ferris wheel. Ouch, I'm Hey, hey, hey. Why did that not blow up? I should just use the claw shot. I'm actually killing myself. All right, well, well, well. Die, die, die. What's up with shoes hopping around? Uh, you can scoop up the purple chew jelly. I don't think it, I think it like heals a heart, like one heart. Useless though. Just like these water bombs. All these freaking water bombs. So definitely not worth your bottle to use on one heart. I mean, I guess if you're desperate, but I don't know how you can be desperate. Like, it's kind of hard to die, if, <laughs> like just going through a dungeon. That is one complaint about this game, I guess. But really, it's a, kind of a Zelda thing in general. Dying usually isn't like a, a thing other than boss battles. Like, you're not just gonna walk through a dungeon most of the time. I mean, there are exceptions, obviously. Like fall in like a fire over and over or something like in a fire temple then obviously you're gonna die but like usually you don't have to worry about dying too much and i am not sure where to go from here uh i'm just gonna walk around <laughs> i think maybe i have to go that way let's see if i can get up that way this has turned into a very ranty video huh how about that oh whoa no there is no platform under there i thought there was a platform there there is clearly nothing there let's just go the other way <laughs> Clearly, not the right way to go. But we can just walk through here now. That's convenient. Yeah, I was supposed to go around here. You see all those chests around? I'm trying to try to get all the chests. Because I know I said before, you know, I'm not going to get the Luffy chest. And it's true. 
But quite frankly, I forget in this dungeon which are rupee chests and which are actually like important ones. Because I don't remember the layout of this dungeon at all. Well, I shouldn't say at all. I don't remember it very well. So we'll probably just grab them all, collect them all. Yeah, see, there's a chest under here, I think. Uh, where is it? Which of the giant clam? Uh, there it is, right there. That <laughs> clam looks like it can be like in a banjo game. It looks so ridiculous. Just this giant clam coming at you. Oh, 20 rupees. Wasn't that one? Absolutely. Alright, back up to the top. Let's go under the Ferris wheel thingamajig. Come on, let me in. Let me in, let me in. Oh, F you. Past here, let's see what we have. A door! A door looks good. The door is good for opening. The doors on the on this dungeon all look like they have bars in front. It's kind of confusing. Uh, here's a lizard folks. So just kind of jump out and be like, yeah, he's gonna go. Great. And here comes another one, lizard folks. Look at him sitting over there, like I don't even know. He's there. One spin attack off the bench. <laughs> Absolutely no contest at all. Let's see if I can get that chest over there. It looks like I have to. I can't latch onto the torch. So I gotta go to the other one. Uh, that's a tricky one though. Come on, get it. Can't do that. See? More proof that you cannot do the torches. Come on. Latch. Oh wow. <laughs> I must have just barely caught that. Alright, what's in here? 20 rupees. Again. Wow. Well, it turns out there's no way to get back without going all the way around from that stupid little platform with 20 rupees. So, here we are again. Just again, getting back to where we were. No change at all, so it's not really cutting out stuff, I don't think. And there's another red rupee. Wow. Oh, I mean, filling up our wallet quite nicely, but that doesn't really help. Ah, uh, there's a switch right there. Open that gate. And yes, game, I do have the claw shot line out, but if you're still checking. Some games do that way too much. Uh, I know in like Superstar Saga, uh, which is another Let's Play of mine that I did right before this, um, like in the last area in Bowser's Castle, like it still checks to make sure you have the Ultra Hammer by just putting rocks like in a skinny hallway. It's like obviously I have the Ultra Hammer by this point. I mean, it's just a minor little funny thing that games tend to do all the time, but I, I find it quite hilarious. All right, so I believe the water level's filled up to the point where we can get in that room, but we don't have a key. Having the key is the problem. So we need to find a key. So let's go down this way and in this door to find a key. All right, so in here we have another hallway. See, all these rooms look the same. That's another reason the Lake Bed Temple's confusing, because all the rooms look the same. It's hard to, you know, get your bearings and really tell where you actually are. Oh boy, this room looks pretty intricate. Bridge raising up. Oh, this is the room we were in before. Okay. All right. I was thinking this was a new room. No, we were in here to get a key. Like, we just came in here to grab a key and leave. I don't know if you remember that. That was way at the beginning of the dungeon. But uh, now that this bridge is finally raised up, it's just been sitting on the ground for a while. We can walk across to over here. And let's see. There's a chest back there, it looks like. How do we get back there? There's a target on the ceiling. Can I use that? Target! And no. <laughs> that is no help to me. Right. Oh, tech type. Jeez, they can jump pretty high. There. Spin attack. That's over. Just slash that one in the eye over and over. Right, there's a switch here. See, that switch seems to open the gate. Those are both things. Great. Oh, I already know what we have to do. Oh, God. Ouch. Ouch. That guy just got... Destroyed. That wasn't even fair. There we go. So let's latch onto that and yep, pull us through. Imagine if it. Imagine if we didn't make it in time. The gate just like snapped you in half. And just game over instantly. That would suck. Piece of heart. Awesome. Collect five pieces of form a heart container. Yes, that's great. All right, how do we get out of here? Ah, now that we use that button. Put that target on the ceiling. Cool. All right, and now we're just we're just gonna backtrack to the main room. Back in the main room once again. Just, again, simple backtracking. Nothing that you really missed. I mean, every backtracking is kind of boring throughout here. You have to do it kind of a lot, so. Oh, well. 
Alright, let's see. What do we have to do? Looks like we definitely have to go this way. So let's do that. And walking around, walking around. <laughs> I have no idea what to do. Hold on. No, I'm going to figure it out. Uh, this was one room we haven't been to. I'm pretty sure it's this room. So let's, yeah. And it has a claw shot little switch thing. There. So that seems like a pretty logical choice. Let's latch onto that little switch. Spin the staircase around. Yeah, hopefully water will, yeah, water will pour down and into this room. First, let me check up here. Have I been up here yet? I don't even know. Um, I think I've been in this room straight ahead. I must have been in this room because, yeah, because that's where I let the water in. And yeah, I do have to go down there. Okay. I was just making sure. Right, so let's ride back down. I guess that's the closest thing. You'll get to a slide in this game, like how Mario games have slides. Those, those are always fun, too. I love how they brought that back into Mario Galaxy 2 with the slide. Love it. All right. Through this door, we have probably another big open room with little circular platforms. <laughs> what a surprise. That's exactly what we have. But I think I'm actually going to call it quits here. We are getting pretty close to the end of the dungeon. Um... Yeah, so I don't want to really rush things right here and have a super long episode. So I'm going to save. I will use Oko, though. I'll, I'll show you that. I might as well, before I forget. Because I'd probably forget, like, way down the road to not show that off at all. And that's that's kind of an important thing. So let me show up the Oko little thingamajig from our inventory. If I can press the right button, I'll just cycle through all the buttons until you find the right one. Okay. So if we summon... Little Miss Oko, she'll be like, you can return right here. It's just like Ferrari's win from Ocarina of Time or other similar transportation methods from other Zelda games. So that's Oko Jr. It's just a floating head. Like, that's really creepy. But it's just going to warp us out. And in the next episode of Twilight Princess, we'll continue exploring the Lake Fed Temple. Probably wrap it up.